Back in 2018, there were popular headlines about a man who had become paralyzed from a spinal cord injury and had begun to walk again with the aid of a walker. Now the same team has taken their research and their experiments even further with sophisticated neurotechnological implants that are autonomously controlled and which can enable a fully paralyzed person to walk again. In this video, we'll take a look at new experiments and new research from Switzerland where the research team got three people who were completely paralyzed from waist below to walk, swim and cycle using their new implant system. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. In this experiment, researchers from Lausanne, Switzerland enrolled three people whose lower bodies were completely paralyzed after spinal cord injuries. These patients had had paralysis for anywhere from one to nine years. The device itself is an electrical stimulator with implants that are placed just below the vertebrae or the bones on the spinal cord. These implants can then stimulate certain neurons by firing electrical pulses and thus modulate muscle groups over a large region of the spinal cord. This activates the spinal cord, stimulating what the brain would naturally do when a person wants to execute a motor function. This in turn starts to move leg muscles and also the muscles on the trunk. The whole thing, all of these implants are controlled with a touchpad which the patients hold. This technology is very very advanced and precise. The three patients were able to get up and start walking immediately within an hour after years of being unable to walk. They were also able to swim and cycle. But to use the implants and the device outdoors, the patients needed to undergo training to get used to the system. So over the next six months or so, the three patients followed a strict training program based on the stimulation programs that were written by the neurobiologists to figure out which parts of the body needed to strengthen. So they started to eventually regain muscle mass and strength. They also were able to then move independently without the need for another person for support and they were able to stand and drink at a bar and go for walks outside with the aid of their walker. The researchers are now going to collaborate with the company called Onward Medical that has plans to commercialize and scale up the medical technology. The implants that were used in the study were initially used to alleviate pain. The team had a breakthrough in design when they redesigned the pads or the contact points in their electrodes, enabling them to target deeper parts of neurons. Previously, experiments that have attempted to restore walking in paralyzed patients took months and a lot of training. But this device enabled people who haven't walked for years to start walking in less than an hour. To do this, the authors first mapped out neurons, muscles and parts of the spinal cord which are motor hotspots or are involved in movement. They ran elaborate simulation adjusting pulse frequencies of signals to bring forth a large amount of movement in muscle groups and the researchers then built a library of such movement algorithms. When the three patients started to walk, the team noticed that their movement was actually pretty good but they had lost so much strength and muscle mass that their legs could not support their body weight. So initially support was required in the form of another person. There were also then training programs and the patients performed exercises like squats and leg press which helped restore muscle mass making legs strong again. The researchers also noticed that the patients did not seem to face the normal muscle fatigue that Typically, patients undergoing neurostimulation did. All patients walked up to 300 independent steps on the very first day. Additionally, two of the patients were able to extend their step length and modulate the amplitude of their movements as well. The authors initially programmed movements for walking and then extended it to other activities. So they had the three participants use their legs to swim and also to pedal on a motorized biking machine. What's more, the researchers were also able to induce movement in the trunk muscles or the muscles in the torso. The participants had had difficulty in things like standing upright after bending down or sitting upright after bending down. 
So the device was able to make these movements easier by stimulating the spinal cord and increasing trunk muscle movement. This allowed the participants to do further activities like even canoeing on a lake and boxing. After months of using these electrodes, two of the three patients in the study can actually activate a little bit of their own muscles without electrical pulses, but not enough to majorly move. The researchers learned that the sooner a person starts the therapy and using the device after their injury, the more effect it will have. The results are very promising, but they're not without limitations. Firstly, at least six centimeters of a healthy spinal cord is needed, so extensive injuries make it hard for this device to be used. Then, of course, currently it works for the paralysis of lower body and not any other part just yet. And three patients ultimately is still not enough to start selling or distributing a device. There needs to be more clinical trials and more independent studies that would evaluate and replicate these findings. Also, the handheld device is bulky and the researchers now hope to miniaturize it and even enable it to be controlled by a smartphone. Now, the researchers hope to do all of this within the end of this year and larger trials involving up to 100 people are expected to begin soon.